Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. Thank you. It is good to gather together with you on this sixth Sunday in the season of Epiphany. And it is a great pleasure to worship together as we celebrate during the season of Epiphany, our God of new beginnings. And we'll be talking about that more throughout this morning as we hear the message and reflect on our scripture readings for today. But before we do, just a few announcements to share with you. One of the things that we're so grateful for here at Our Saviors is being a part of a family that helps each other. And much of what we do as church depends on people like you giving of your time and your talents in support of our mission to proclaim Christ and nurture a faith that connects to everyday life. Throughout these past few weeks, we've been highlighting people who do things around here in such a special way, and today we're going to do it again. Please join me today in saying thank you to those dedicated, willing servants who serve in our food ministry here at Our Saviors, who help with Wednesday meals, Saturday night meals, Sunday meals, breakfast, all the things that they do to provide food and fellowship for us here together at Our Saviors. So we say thank you to our food ministry volunteers today, and let's do that with a round of applause. They provide a wonderful service, and they have a lot of fun while they do that. So if you'd like to find out more about how you, too, could be part of our food ministry team, you can check out the table. It's right in the narthex on your way out. You probably saw it on your way in, too, but check it out when you leave today. And uh, you can also talk with Debbie Thies, our food ministry coordinator. By joining uh, this team, you will help us to live out our core value of community and service. So again, thank you. Thank you for that gift. In a Lutheran church, we often confirm kids in eighth or ninth grade. But what happens if you're an adult and you were never confirmed? Sometimes those things happen. Well, good news for you, if that is the case, for this month of February, everyone is included uh, in this welcome to join us in our Lutheranism 101 class with Pastor Justin. Sunday mornings, this happens at 10 o'clock in room 103. Now, you can also come Sunday mornings in March as uh, we extend that class into an adult confirmation class. So you're able to join there and then work towards that being confirmed here at Our Saviors, too. So if you'd like to join up uh, for that, you can certainly do so by stopping by the Welcome Center or calling the church office and just telling us that you'd like to participate in that opportunity as well. If you're going by the Welcome Center, you can also sign up to help on February 17th at the Mobile Food Pantry Giveaway. And you can also sign up to be a voting member at the South Dakota Senate Assembly on June 3rd to the 4th. And that's actually taking place right here at Our Savior, so you don't have to go too far either. And it is a wonderful experience, so go by the Welcome Center and sign up for some of those kind of things too. We have missed our chili cook-off these past couple of years because of our COVID situation, but we are bringing it back again this year. But you need to sign up to participate as a contestant. As of today, the competition looks to favor the one person who has registered to sign up. (laughs) We're just starting this, so no worries. But, uh, you know, your odds are really good of winning if you sign up right now. Um, But, uh, you know, just go check out that sign-up list at the Welcome Center. Uh, Share your best chili with us at this uh, chili cook-off again this year. It's always a lot of fun. And uh, uh, you can share your best chili with the hungry masses who will gather next Sunday with spoons in hand. So, sign up soon. Thanks. Uh, This weekend, we have a wonderful opportunity to celebrate Camping Weekend here at OSL. 
as we give thanks for the many ways camping ministries touch all ages with the love of Christ. And uh, well, here, let me just let, I'll show you this video and you can see what I'm talking about. Hi, we're the Vanscape and family. And we're excited to tell you why we enjoy going through Lutheran's Outdoors. Jacob, what's your favorite thing about summer Bible camp? Um, my name is Jacob, and I like doing the activities. Hi, my name is Matthew. My favorite thing out on the ranch is riding the horses. Hi, my name is Dan in Scapen. Um, the adult education portion is a part that I I didn't anticipate, but I really enjoy. Uh, the food is absolutely amazing at Outlaw Ranch, uh, which is where our family goes each year. And uh, Mary Kettle is one of my favorite humans alive, so it's a pleasure to see her every year, uh, who's the horse wrangler at Outlaw Ranch. And I'm Greta Vanscapen, and my favorite parts of camp are the adult learning sessions, and then just a chance to let your kids uh, run free and enjoy the outdoors and being able to spend some quality time together as a family. We've been going to Lutheran Outdoors for seven years now and we highly encourage your family to do the same thing. In fact, also Matthew has uh, started going to Nisodak now too. So again, we'd highly encourage you to give it a shot because for our family, it is our favorite thing and favorite place on earth. <laughs> Thank you, Van Scapens. I have to remember to ask him if their pet giraffe goes to camp with them or not. I have to check on that. But, you know, it is a wonderful opportunity. My kids and my wife and I, we went to camp many, many times through the years, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful experience. So if you'd like to find out more about that, we have an opportunity for you today. Uh, along with our celebration of camp ministry, we have some camp representatives here with us. We have uh, Sarah Hutink from uh, Ingham Okoboji, Marv Nissevold from Chitek, and Paul Hansen from Lutheran Outdoors in South Dakota. They're with us. They've been here all morning long, and we, uh, if you want any, uh, ask any questions to them of camping ministries, they're around here this morning. So let's welcome our guests with us today. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. Wonderful folks who share God's love in such a special way through our camping ministry. You know, talking of youth and speaking of youth, with, uh, we have an announcement for you. With joy and anticipation, we are announcing that our youth director, John Schomburg, is anticipating entering candidacy for ordained ministry within the United Methodist Church. While this will mean a change of leadership for our youth ministry here at Our Saviors later this year, we share in John's excitement for this new call as we surround him and his family in prayer as they navigate their way through this transition time. So congratulate John and wish him well when you see him out and about in the church. We are currently hiring soundboard and worship screen operators. These are paid positions. For more information, you can contact our music director, Jean Lavasser. And also, uh, if you would like, these announcements and many other things that are happening here around church, plus the prayers of intercession for today, are available at the kiosk near the Welcome Center. You can pick them up on your way out. As we gather together, both here in person and those of you who are joining us over the airwaves, we are gathering in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn.
Please join me now in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Knowing who we are and whose we are, we confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of mercy and new beginnings, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned away from you when you did not appear or act as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Forgive us for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. Give us a fresh start that we may share your love for all creation. Amen. My friends, rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. United in the Spirit of God, we pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. Let us pray. God of all creation, bless all those who thirst in you. In a world that is filled with uncertainty and fear, reassure us through the power of your Spirit that you are with us, so that each new day hope may be renewed in the hearts of your people. God of grace, God of grace and love, you continue to bless the work of the church throughout the world in so many amazing ways. This weekend, we give you thanks for the ministry we share with our camping partners who gather families together to celebrate your love amidst the beauty of your creation. Teach us to be good stewards of your world so that we will always have a place to gather outdoors to sing your praise. God of grace, God of the nations, we pray for peace in our world, especially in regions where the threat of war is great. Fill the hearts of leaders with a desire to bring people and nations together so that all may live in hope and safety. God of grace, God of healing, your steadfast love endures forever. We pray for those in need of hope and healing. Bless doctors and nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Bring healing to Harlene Cheswald and Serafina Kosick. Be with Ginny Holmes and Don Abbas, and with those whom we name in our hearts before you now. Comfort the family of Dolores Acid as they mourn her death. And be with Liz and Charlie Tamajian, Liz's brother Steve, and their entire family as they mourn the death of Liz's mother, Norma Palmer. May the eternal promise of your grace bring them healing and peace. God of grace. 
God of mercy, strengthen this congregation's partnership with community organizations and ministries, such as Karis Ministry Partners, Lutheran Social Services, and our friends at Susan B. Anthony Elementary. Bless our work with refugee families and multiply our efforts to share Christ's love. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will receive our offering and consider now the abundant gifts that you have received from God and then give a gift that reflects that gratitude you feel, trusting that your gift will be part of how God's love is reaching every corner of the world through the ministry of this church. Our offering is now received.
please join me in our offertory prayer. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this holy food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for Kid Talk. Are there some kids out there? Why don't you come on up, kids, and join me up here up front as we have a little conversation time together. I see a few kids out there. Come join me. Come on up. Good to see you. Whoo, excuse me. All right, good to see you. Well, you're going to do a dance even. All right, very good. <laughs> You should always dance when it's time for Kid Talk. All right, very good. Good to see you. Oh, it is so good to have you here with me this morning because, you know, we're going to talk about blessings today. And I just was, first of all, I wanted to ask you about uh, a phrase that I wonder if you've ever heard before. Have you ever heard the word, or the phrase, turning things upside down? Turning things upside down? You think so? Yeah, yeah. Well, I bet you have, but I bet you, you're, you're not quite sure what it means. Now, it's not like when I was a kid, my brothers would grab me by my feet and turn me upside down. That's not what I'm talking about. It was when, it's when we kind of have an idea of something, and we think it's just like this, and we understand it, and we think it's, this is what it means, and then all of a sudden we learn something new, and we think something totally different about what we've understood before. It's taking an idea and turning it upside down. Okay, follow me? Understanding something this way, but all of a sudden, understanding it in a whole new way. Turning things upside down. That's what that means. In just a few minutes, Pastor Randy is going to share with us a story from the gospel about how Jesus kind of turned something upside down. Jesus was talking about blessed people. People who are blessed. Do you know who blessed people are? What makes a person blessed? Oh, well, that's a wonderful way to think about a blessed person. He said a person who is blessed is a person who is loved or liked. That's really true. That's very true. That is a blessed person. And you know, when I think about the way the world understands blessed people, I think of other things too. That is great. But sometimes I think the world thinks of a blessed person as somebody that maybe has, uh, it's just everything is going right for them. Maybe they have lots and lots of money and things. They're rich. Maybe they uh, are powerful. They have lots of power and everybody follows what they say. Or maybe a blessed person is somebody that just everything in life seems to work out for them, Okay. That's kind of the way people look at blessed people. That's kind of the way it is. But Jesus said today something that turned everything upside down. Jesus said some things like, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are people that we don't often think are blessed. Now, if we think of a person who's poor or a person who's hungry or a person who doesn't have good health, and we think of those folks and we think that maybe they're not blessed because, you know, things aren't perfect in their life. But the truth of the matter is nobody lives a perfect life. None of us have everything in life go the way we want it to all the time. Sometimes things happen that we just don't understand. And in those times when things happen that aren't good, are we still blessed? That's where it gets tricky, but you're saying yes, so I think you might understand. That's what Jesus was saying today. He was saying that even though things in life might not be just the best for you, you're still blessed. That turned the whole world's idea of blessed people upside down. Now, was Jesus saying you're blessed because bad things happen to you? No. No, God doesn't want bad things to happen to you. But we are blessed, Jesus says, because even when things aren't right, God still loves us. 
God is with us. And God sends us people to help us through those times. And that's when we're blessed. Not because of bad things, but because that God promises to work through even the bad things to make life good for us. To bring the things back that we need the most. And what we need the most is to know that we're never alone. God's always there with us, even in the bad times. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. I think so. And that's what Jesus says, too. So in a world when sometimes things don't go right, realize that you are still blessed because you have people that love you, like you said earlier, and a God who loves you and who will always be with you. Let's say a prayer, okay? Dear God, we thank you for the many, many blessings we have in our life. In all things, God, we thank you that we are loved and that you're with us. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. It was good to talk with you guys. Have a great week, okay? You can head back to your seats now. And have a blessed week, okay? God speaks to us in Scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Humanity. 
Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, our saviors. Grace to you and peace from God Almighty and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Whoa, Nelly. That's the effect of Jesus' words in our ears today. Slow down. Watch out. You might be heading in the wrong direction. Jesus' words of blessing and woe appear early on in the story of Jesus' ministry. By this point, chapter 6 in the story, he's hitting his stride and his ministry is expanding exponentially. So he seizes an opportunity to offer up a teaching that effectively puts on the breaks and calls everyone interested in following him to reorient their thinking so that they are aligned with the values of the reign of God. Now that realignment is necessary because you see Jesus' mission, Jesus' purpose, they're so different than the values of this world. Remember with me back just a couple of chapters in Luke's gospel, back to chapter four, right around verse 16, when Jesus used the words of the prophet Isaiah to declare boldly that he is in fact the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy of reversal and jubilee. He is the one on whom the spirit of the Lord rests. He is the anointed one who is bringing good news to the poor. He is the one who has been sent to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed, indeed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. These ancient words of Isaiah essentially became for Jesus his personal mission statement. And the rest of the story in Luke's gospel is an account of how he carried out that mission. For instance, in the small section between that pivotal proclamation of Jesus in chapter four and the story that Pastor Tim just shared with you in chapter six, here's what Jesus was up to. After that moment in the synagogue when he used the prophet's words to be his own, He was carted out to the edge of the city and they were gonna throw him off a cliff, but somehow he avoided certain death and then went on to free a man who had been tormented for who knows how long by an unclean spirit. He then heals Simon's mother-in-law of a fever as well as many others who just showed up because they heard there was a healer in town He began to teach throughout the region, understanding that his message was not just for a few, but needed to be proclaimed far and wide. He then called his first four disciples, simple fishermen, who, Luke says, left everything in order to follow him. He cleansed a man with leprosy and restored him to his community. He declared forgiveness to a man who was paralyzed, who had been lowered down into this house through the roof, and then healed him so that he could walk out of that place on his own power. He called another disciple, Levi, the tax collector, and then was criticized heavily for hanging out with the wrong sort of people. He answered questions about fasting and the Sabbath, 
offering a new interpretation of those ancient religious laws. He then went on to heal a man of a withered hand on the Sabbath, which brought, of course, accusations of being a lawbreaker. And then he chose from among his many followers 12 apostles, none of them extraordinary or noteworthy, but who would, in fact, become the very ones who would carry the story about Jesus, the good news, to the ends of the earth. Anyone with eyes to see and ears to hear can understand that this Jesus story from the very beginning is about this one sent by God who prioritizes above everything else loving the least and saving the lost, which is a far cry from what the world values. He does so, of course, because he embodies the power of God in ways nobody else can. I mean, all people had to do that day, the story that we read today, all they had to do was reach out and touch him, and power literally flowed out of him so that they were healed. Even so, in this story we read today, Luke tells us that Jesus came down with his disciples and met the crowd who had gathered that day on a level place. Everyone was on the same plane. And he shared his divine power in ways that healed and liberated not just a few, but Luke tells us, all of them, <laughs> all of them. Then in the middle of that amazing scene, Jesus looked at those whom he had just named as his inner circle, and he hit the brakes on the whole thing. Whoa, Nellie. He taught them, saying, turn your attention to those whom God favors, the poor, the hungry, the grieving, the persecuted. Look around you at all of these people. These are the ones you should be loving and taking care of. He went on to say, you are heading for trouble as my followers, when you focus on things that distract you from the ways of God, things like amassing personal wealth, runaway consumption, fun and games, popularity. The reign of God is for all, he would teach, not just a few. So, on the one hand, he would say, relax, your eternal destiny is in God's hands and God is a God of love, but repent. Get your head and your heart on track if you're going to follow me because my ways are opposite the ways of this world and it's going to be hard work to keep your focus where it needs to be. Here at Our Saviors, we do our level best to engage this hard work by aspiring to follow Jesus wholeheartedly with a ministry of welcome and grace for all because we believe that the same grace that we have received is something that is to be shared with everyone. So we strive to be generous in how we steward everything that God has given us in January alone, we collected over 2,300 rolls of toilet paper and then served nearly 400 families at Necessities for Neighbors. We fed our friends at Susan B. Anthony Elementary during their conferences, and we resettled a refugee family from Afghanistan. 
We regularly send much needed financial assistance when tornadoes and fires and floods destroy people's lives. And we work together with over 25 ministry partners who share our mission to extend God's reign of love to all. <clears throat> we also strive to be what I would call a leveling church, a community where all of God's children are welcome, all of them, where everyone has a place and a purpose, and where we work together in humility and grace to steward whatever privilege we may have in service to God's mission to love and bless all of creation. Bishop Desmond Tutu puts this leveling work in perspective when he writes, we are each a God carrier, a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, to treat anyone as less than this is not just wrong, it is veritably blasphemous and sacrilegious. It is as if we were to spit in the face of God. Consequently, injustice, racism, exploitation, oppression are to be opposed not as a political task, but as a response to a religious, a spiritual imperative. Not to oppose these manifestations of evil would be tantamount to disobeying God. In a similar vein, presiding bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church in this country has shared with the church that he leads a vision statement that I believe captures the essence of Jesus' call to all who would follow him in this day and age. He writes, come and see. We are becoming a new and reformed church, the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. I love that. Individuals, small gathered communities, and congregations whose way of life is the way of Jesus and the way of love. No longer centered on empire and establishment, no longer fixated on preserving institutions, no longer shoring up white supremacy or anything else that hurts or harms any child of God. By God's grace, we are becoming a church that looks and acts like Jesus. My friends, what will it take for us at our saviors to become a church that looks and acts like Jesus? To slow down enough to recognize where we may have gone astray and to make those course corrections that bring us back in line with Jesus' mission to transform this world of sin and brokenness into one beloved community formed around the values of the reign of God. I'll tell you what it'll take. It'll take all of us, every one of us, keeping our focus on the one who calls us to follow. The one who gave himself on the cross for the sake of the world. Now, it's true, this is a difficult path to follow, the path of discipleship. But it is the only path that leads to the promised blessings of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. God is a source of love. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, We remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. And as you do come forward, please remember to hold out your hands. We'll place a wafer in your hand. If you'd prefer a gluten-free wafer, just ask and we will provide that for you. Same with the wine. If you'd prefer grape juice instead, just ask for that and we will give the grape juice to you too. As you return to your seats, place the cups and the empty baskets provided. And please remember to keep a safe distance between you and those around you. Come, for all is ready.
Good morning. I'm Pastor Tim Lemmy, one of the pastors here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. And on behalf of our staff and congregation, I would like to take just a moment to welcome all of you to our worship service today. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us via television or Facebook Live as we join our hearts together in praise to God through scripture, prayer, and song. No matter where you might be today, we are glad that you are here with us as we give thanks to God for the spirit of Christ's love that unites us in ministry. If you would like to learn more about how you can be a part of the ministry of our saviors, simply give our church office a call and speak to one of our pastors or visit our website and our Facebook page to learn more about our exciting ministry opportunities. And if our ministry has touched your heart, I also invite you to prayerfully consider making a financial gift to our saviors that will help sustain this life-giving work that God has given us to do together. Through gifts from members and friends like you, we continue to proclaim Christ to our community and world and nurture a faith in all of us that connects to everyday life. You may give securely online at oslchurch.com forward slash giving or by texting the word sharing to 73256. Once again, thank you for joining us today and may the peace of Christ fill your heart with the warmth and joy of God's eternal love. Blessings to you all. Please pray with me. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you prepare to go on your way, receive this blessing. May God who leads you in the paths of righteousness, who takes delight in you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. 
Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.